This video segment is a small part of what the Market Guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at themarketguys.com. Well, good evening, everyone. This is AJ Monty joining in right at the top of the hour. It's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and we are recording this session for our members which, uh, by the way, will be archived on our website under the member section of the, of the website. And we're also recording this on the last day of winter. So tomorrow we're looking forward to springtime. I know a lot of you who are up north are still not feeling that spring weather. And right now I'm actually in a torrential downpour as I look out the window of my office here. It's just dark all the way around and it's coming down in sheets. But uh, I do like the extra daylight at the end of the day. Makes you feel like you have more time when you really don't. But it's more of a psychological thing. You know what I'm talking about there. And um, and with the last day of winter, we had quite a bit of volatility in the markets today, which I'm going to go over here, here in a minute. But first, I, I bring up Facebook because there is – a big controversy now with Facebook in in the fact that they were giving out uh, there's some privacy issues with the way that data has been mined through the Facebook software and I'm sure that news is not going to go away anytime soon it's it's a hot topic privacy on the web is something that people value dearly and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if safe Facebook drops even more than it has today. One of the headlines read that uh, Mark uh, Zuckerberg, let me, let me just uh, pull this up for you here. Some of you may have seen this through MarketWatch already, but Mark Zuckerberg saved tens of millions of dollars by selling his Facebook stock ahead of Monday's decline. Now, in my world, that's insider trading. And I, I don't know how he got away with that one because he knew that it was going to hit the fan and he got out uh, ahead of the big sell off. And even though the stock gapped down, he saved tens of millions. Now in the long run, I think he wound up losing $7 billion today, but I think uh, Mark should give me a call so I could tell him where to put his stop loss <laughs> because uh, again, that stock is uh, right at a support level right here. And, uh, it did gap down on super high volume. Before I got started, I looked at the monthly chart of Facebook, and you could see it's still technically in an upward sloping trend. But if you look at the volume down here, the volume is already uh, has already surpassed the average uh, volume of the past twelve months, and and I think that that volume is going to increase. So. If you have Facebook, I would be careful. I would probably not want to buy more until until it shows signs of bouncing off of this. But the good news is that it rallied actually towards the end of the day and created this long shadow. I'll zoom in here for you. It created a long shadow under the candle, so it did not close on the low. And again, look at that super high volume today. Uh, my guess is that it will probably go a little bit lower tomorrow and maybe even into Wednesday before making an attempt to fill this gap. But if you if you know anything about gap trading, also know that once the gap fills, and I said this on the last weekly market report, once the gap fills, there's an 80% chance that the stock will reverse and go back down after the gap fills. So again, for anyone who's long Facebook, be very careful of that one, especially with all the news out there as it's unfolding. Okay, let's get into our overall market analysis. If you're following along with the weekly market report, I talked about the stale red light that the general markets are going through, and I did forecast a bounce at the end of this week. I know it's only Monday, and we have a red candle there on the diamonds, but also look, there's a, a pretty significant shadow under the candle, so the markets did not close on a low. We're right at my pivot point. 
which is my target from last week's report. We hit that precisely on the money right there. It's close from Friday. Hit that target. So I still think by the end of this week, we can see higher prices. But again, if you've been following along month after month, you'll know that I am a, I, I, weighs, I wave the caution flag because I'm still a cautious long. Long term, I think that the markets are gonna come down and have a, a significant correction, maybe even a more dramatic sell-off than we've seen in decades. But every time you talk bubble, what happens? It seems that the, the buyers rush in and try to search for bargains at a bottom as, as prices bounce. So my, my uh, advice is to make sure you trail your stops up and put a hard stop below some key support levels so that if the diamonds start to reverse and go down and stay down below the moving averages, uh, you, you could make sure that you're not taking any new long positions. Again, this is a three-year upward trend of the diamonds and you see all this congestion up here this is volatility you've got bullish engulfing patterns right here you got bearish engulfing patterns here on the weekly chart and you know that confusion adds to volatility and in turn fear starts to come in so i'm not a hundred percent in short selling mode at this particular point but i'm pretty darn close and you'll know when I uh, raise the red flag, you'll know from, from my reports and especially the members, if you're an Oracle subscriber, you'll know that we will most likely start to reverse our positions entirely when we see the complete sell signal. So that's with the diamonds. Now, if we look at the weekly chart on the spiders, same thing. Uh, two weeks ago, we had interesting little bit of action here where we had a, a weekly bearish engulfing pattern that was completely eliminated with a bullish engulfing pattern the following week again confusion volatility fear starts to come in when you see that and we're at a key resistance level here as i go back to the daily chart you'll see my target for the end of this week is resistance is that the resistance that is also the gap fill point that i pointed out the week before last as a target we hit that target reverse remember the 80 20 rule well 80 percent of the time after a gap fills market reverses that's exactly what happened so here again with the spiders how many red candles do we see in a row right there there's six red candles in a row we're long overdue for a green one, and we have a long shadow under the spiders as well. Looking at the Qs, that's the NASDAQ market, also known as the power shares. I drew this and highlighted this horizontal line as a roll reversal uh, horizontal line, and I said that we would most likely test that. We tested it, but we failed the test, and today we gapped down below support. So what's going to happen is, uh, you know, I don't put out a midweek market report. I put it out on Friday, but this is one that I probably will not hit a target on up here. This is my target for the queues. In fact, what I think could happen now is that towards the end of the week, we could rally up to resistance. And then once that gap fills here, we'll probably reverse as this returns back to a resistance point. So in other words, if you have any NASDAQ stocks, you want to keep a very, very close eye on those because they're generally the smaller cap stocks. And when institutions start selling out of NASDAQ stocks, if they have to move, you know, let's say they have to move $2 million of a cheaper stock, they're going to move the price of that stock more so than if they were selling uh, $2 million of, you know, a Google. Or let's say, you know, you sell $2 million worth of Google stock, you're not going to move the shares anywhere. But a, a, a cheaper uh, share price, these institutions could lay heavily on, onto the NASDAQ market. You could see a bigger downturn there. So that's that's with the cues. Now, hopping to a more broad-based index with the Russell 2000, interestingly enough, we came down to the 20-period moving average. Um, 
formed a, uh, a very, very long shadow there. And almost, let me zoom in here, we almost closed today with a uh, bearish engulfing pattern. If we, if we opened a penny higher, that would have been a bearish engulfing pattern, and this would have been a game changer. Uh, but the long shadow, again, for the Russell 2000 tells us that towards the end of the day, the buyers went bargain shopping. And if I go to an intraday chart looking at minute by minute, you'll see that the buying came in right around 1 o'clock. You see this? This uh, For those of you who are not used to seeing an intraday chart, this is set up to uh, mark every minute. And this gray area here is the close from Friday. And the opening of the Russell 2000 was right at the high, but it wasn't, it didn't open up higher than the close here. So it was not a, a bearish engulfing pattern. Uh, but look, it sold off throughout the day and right at one o'clock hit a low. And you can see how the buyers crept back in from one o'clock right up until four o'clock. So for you know, a good three hours, there was buying coming in, and it was pretty steady buying. So again, that, that adds some support and, and credence to uh, more or less my forecast for ending the, the week higher, and I think the Russell 2000 could actually do that, uh, definitely higher than where we, we closed today. Okay, one thing I noticed is uh, – in the weekly market report, I try to keep the report to around seven or eight minutes. When it starts to go longer than that, uh, we found through our analysis that people tend to to abandon the video after after 10 minutes. It starts to get 10 minutes, 12 minutes, you're pushing it. But seven to eight minutes is a sweet spot. So I went a little bit over, and I did not have enough time last week to talk about the VIX. Um, so I'll cover it here on today's call. Uh, this was my forecast lines for the VIX uh, a, a week ago. So a week from last Friday, a report went out and I said the VIX would probably drop to test support and bounce off the of support. And my target for the VIX was the 20 period moving average. And what happened is actually today we hit the 20 period moving average on the VIX. And because the VIX is inversely related to the S&P that we just looked at, you see that the shadow is now above the VIX. And the reason I point this out is because if you look back at all of the other times when the VIX had a long shadow above the candle, you see these? Every single time, I'm, I'm not talking you know, 80% of the time, 100% of the time, after a shadow, a significant shadow that is, shows up on the upper portion of the candle, the VIX has dropped at, you know, right after those points. So what does that mean? Um, actually, I could draw a line on here because then I'll carry that on over to next week's, uh, end of this week's report. So what I think is going to happen for the VIX is the VIX is probably going to drop by the end of the week, which in turn is what? For the S&P, it's bullish, right? So again, that, the, the VIX is confirming what I'm talking about here on my forecast for the general markets. Another reason why we had such high volatility today, because if you look at the intraday high, that's pretty high. It got up to 22. You know, the percentage of price swings here is, is it, it doesn't look like much on the chart, but that's an impressive percentage move. You know, when the low for the VIX today was around 16 and a half and the high was, was up there, what was the high today? It was like 2187, almost 22. That, that's a six point uh, swing in a $16 stock. I mean, that's, that's tremendous volatility and percentage of move. So, um, a lot of that has come because of the talk of a bubble. If you go to the Market Guys Facebook page, I posted two articles just right before I got on to this call with you. I posted two articles that came from Market Watch uh, and talking about the signs that we generally see before a bubble. So they're more or less labeling the general markets as it being in a bubble. I, I don't know 
um, if, if it's a bubble, I, I called it the Trump effect. Um, a lot of the other analysts are calling it a melt up, a melt up. You may have heard that. And what's happening is I think the honeymoon, you know, for Trump in the market is pretty much over and reality is setting in for these investors where they realize that this administration is most likely going to be under attack right up until, you know, 2020. And I don't think investors really enjoy that idea of having to, to battle higher prices. I think they'd much rather see a gradual, steady incline in their portfolio. But when it starts to turn into a struggle, a lot of investors like yourself, especially when we come into tax season, like we are now, you'll, you'll generally see some tax selling. So again, I don't want to sound like I'm talking with a fork and tongue, but I think short term this week, we will move higher. But by right up until April 15th, and we have about a month here, I think you're going to see some tax selling. I would not be surprised to see overall selling in the S&P, in the Dow, in the Russell 2000, which could actually create a rollover into the summer that could put us back into a downtrend. Again, uh, I don't want to draw too many lines on these charts because I, I preserve them from week to week for the market report. But what I will do is draw you the trend line here, taking these lows here, take this low and this low and project out. And you can see that is the overall trend line. And if I were to draw a secondary fan line, again, constructing a fan line is pretty simple. You take the first, you take the last uh, touch point in the first fan line and you use that as a new starting point. So I'm taking that as my next line. And you can see that right here, I have a couple of fan lines that I can draw and I can even draw a third one right there. So if the if if the spider starts breaking down below this low that we had today, or actually this is the low for yeah this today, but it's also the low for the week. If the spider starts to uh, show a low and closing below 268, we will most likely drop to the next fan line in the sequence. Um, so that's you know that's an eight point move that could you know still keep the overall markets in an upward trend. But a break in a fan line is significant because it's a high percentage of the time that when the last fan line in the sequence is broken, there's about a 90% chance that it'll drop to the next fan line in the sequence. So if you're new to the market, guys, and want to learn more about fans and how to draw them, just go to our video page and you'll see uh, a, a very short video. Uh, talking about fan lines and how to construct them. So I'm going to remove these now uh, because, again, I, I don't want to leave those on the chart for next week's market report, but keep, stay tuned. Just by a show of hands, how many of you are – we have a good we have a good group tonight. How many of you are new to the market, guys, never hopped on an open house Q&A session before? Just raise your hand. You can go to the uh, the box there. And just click on your hand. Okay, just a couple of people. Oh, good. Okay, welcome. And the rest of you, I, I'm assuming, are regulars. And uh, welcome, Ron. Welcome, Paul Farley. Hey, from Tampa area. Welcome. Hope you're enjoying the rain. Uh, Katie up there in Michigan uh, hates when I talk about uh, springtime because they're still very much in winter up there. And uh, and Jim and, and Ken Sterling, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so... Uh, let's get right into it because I took 18 minutes to really go over the market. So now is your time to start putting questions in and or stock symbols. So if you'd like me to analyze one of your stocks, type the stock symbol in and, and I'll take these in order. Bob already typed in the video, so I'll get to that one first. And if if you are have no intention of, of asking me to analyze a stock, at least get a pencil or a pen with some blank paper because it never fails. There's always a good stock candidate that pops up thanks to those who are submitting their ideas. You can think of it this way. You know, I go out and I teach the five points for trading success. 
and I have a best-selling book out there. It's doing very well still. Uh, in fact, my my editor, uh, Wiley and Sons, asked me if I had been receiving my checks, and I said no. They've been sending it to my old address for like a year now, and I'm going, what the heck is going on? So uh, that's going to mess up my tax return. But anyway, um, I teach the five points for trading success, and each and every one of you who become familiar with those five points now all of you are scouring the markets for stocks that fit that particular profile and that's the reason why it never fails that we get really good candidates in, in stocks because all of you are shopping based on what you're seeing on the charts and let's let's take bob's nvda as the first example by the way this was a really hot internet stock uh, back in early 2000. This was one that had amazing price swings. And uh, if you do submit a stock, uh, please let me know what your intentions are, okay? If, if, you are, um, if you're thinking about buying it or if you own it already and you think about selling it or, or you just don't know what to do with it, at least let me know because I, I want to, I don't necessarily want to find evidence to support your opinion i want to give an unbiased you know spin or analysis on the chart but at least i know if you're long the stock hey here's where you should protect yourself okay so bob right now i see the stock is in an upward sloping trend and interestingly enough it has a candle pattern that's very similar to what we saw in the russell 2000 and some of the other major markets we have a big red candle higher volume but we have a shadow underneath and again, the stock is in an upward trend. What I see immediately that pops off the chart is down here. I see a an open gap still right around 197, 198, maybe 199. And so, if the if the stock uh, closes again under this 20 period moving average, then you definitely want to move into defense mode because when a stock starts closing for a series of days. Usually, I think it's four days, four consecutive days if it closes. That's usually a sign of a reversal in the trend. You can see back here, uh, NVIDIA closed below the moving average. The next day, you had a big green candle, but it still closed below the moving average. And see, you have four days, fifth day, it closed above and it kind of broke that sequence. But uh, you got that gap down below the market, and that always gets my attention because 80% of the time, remember, gaps fill. So, um, oh, okay, so Bob put a note in, I'd like to short at 250. Um, I don't know if, if it's even going to get that high for you to short it, Bob, uh, but what I would do is uh, if, if any area here, if let's say you shorted at 247, 248, I would put your stop above this high, you know, above 255. I don't know how you're shorting it. If you're going to do that, just borrow the shares from your broker or if you're going to do it through the options. But um, if, if you uh, do short it, you have to understand that this stock has been in an upward trend, so you don't want to buck that. Look at that. Um, I could erase all lines here, and let me just show you a, a, a better place to short it. Uh, I'm going to clear the whole drawing set right now. And let's go back to what I talked about with uh, drawing a uh, fan line. So I'm going to take this low right here. Let's start from that's a pretty obvious low. And I'm going to connect that low to this low and project out. Okay, so that's fan line number one, connecting these two points. And although that doesn't look like um, that's far enough time, that's, that's uh, a good six months between those two points, okay? Now, to construct the fan line, second point in the first fan line starts my new point in the second fan line, and look how I'm connecting this low, this low, this low, and even this low. I can go up and connect that and then project out. Fan line number two, that has a lot of touch points on it, right? One, two, three, four, five touch points. Now I'm going to take that bullish engulfing pattern right there as my first point in the next fan line, and I'm going to do that. See how I'm doing the fans? Then I'm going to take the last touch there and connect here. And now, <coughs> excuse me, now we have four fan lines 
with the most extreme fan line moving almost vertical. Now I could switch back to the daily chart and show Bob the best place to short. Okay. Again, it may not seem as appealing to you, Bob, to short it, you know, uh, below this low right here, which is 237, because you're, what, 13 points off of the area you want to short it. But if it breaks down below that fan line, it's probably going to drop to this fan line, which will be this low right here. This is, you could call that a support level. So that is actually a break uh, below that fan line is actually a safer place to short the stock than to waiting with them rather waiting for it to pull back from a high. So there's my analysis for you there, Bob. All right. Now let's go to David is looking at CVS. David, I don't know unless you added some notes. I don't know what your position is. CVS Health Corp. Um, now, you know, first glance, let me clear it because we analyzed this last time. Look at this. This was a forecast from way back, and we, we hit that target for sure. Well, let's erase and clean this chart up for you. Okay, David is looking at CVS. I'm just checking to see if there's any notes in there. Um, no, no notes on what your opinion is. Okay, now. For those of you, again, who have been following and have heard me talk about the rubber band effect, again, this is simply an analyzing the stock as it compares to the 20 period moving average. You could see in the past, the stock has stretched far above that moving average and then snapped back to it. And you can see also in the past that the stock has stretched far below the moving average only to be drawn back to it. And so this stretch that we have here, let me do my best to try to draw what would be a rubber band here, okay? That vertical red line, it represents the rubber band. It's being stretched. So the good news is, for anyone who's thinking about buying this, is that if we zoom in just a little bit more, you'll see that today, even with all of the negative news, the volume was not super high. In fact, today is the first drop in volume since these red candles have showed up and we have a, a, a stale red light six red candles in a row we're long overdue for a green one so i think there's a good possibility cvs could bounce pretty here pr pretty soon and in in the process you know create maybe a very very short term buy idea and I say short term because I'm not, I don't think this is going to stay in an upward trend. I think we can just get more or less a bear market bounce on this one. Uh, but if you go back and look at the weekly chart on this, you'll see that, uh, again, this is in a downward trend. There's no question CVS is in a downward trend. And it's more or less a downward trading channel. You can look at it this way could do that and then connect some lows parallel to that. There's your trading channel. You see that? And we're more or less at the bottom of the trading channel. So again, it would justify a bounce. But other than playing it as a short-term buy candidate for a quick profit, I would not be a long-term investor in this one, at least not until the, the trend starts reversing and it gets over the upper part of the channel line up here. The stock would have to maintain prices over 80 for me to be an investor in it. Okay, Bombardier uh, coming from Gene. Is that BB? Is it BBD? Let's see. Um, I don't know. It's not BBD. I, I don't know what the symbol is on the New York Stock Exchange uh, there, Gene. I think it's because mine doesn't have. Um, the, the dot B is on there. I don't think it does. Let me try this. BBD dot B. No, it's not coming up. Do you have another symbol for that for the American? Uh, uh, for the uh, for the Dow, rather? If not, then I'm going to have to go to the next one. I'll, uh, Gene, I'll be watching the, the chat box there to make sure uh, you, we get you at least with one stock analyzed. Okay, I'm going to go right to D. And uh, here is ETNG. Um, D owns it and is considering buying more. Now, 
the the second comment there uh d is um to buy more in a market that's already heated up with volatility i think is um it's probably a dangerous move what i would do again this is the weekly chart you see this weekly charts in a significant upward trend it has been for a few years but if i look at the monthly chart on this one look at that much much different picture and you could see here again if i draw some fan lines starting with the monthly chart i could go here connect these lows here um, then I could switch back to my weekly chart. So we already have two fan lines right there. Uh, going to the weekly chart, um, I could say from here to these lows and project out. And then I could say from this low to this low, project out and go to my daily chart now, which I'm slowly getting into. Um, now you have this one here and you even have a more extreme one here so with uh what is that that's how many fan lines is that hold on that's one two three we had two in the monthly two three four five six we have seven fan lines already i normally don't buy anything that has more than three fan lines so you're over the top already with this vertical growth so for, again i'm giving you uh the scenario of what i would do if I own the stock, number one, I probably would not be buying more, but I, but I would absolutely be, be doing anything I could to protect the profits I already have. Now the stock is trading 36 and a half. So to put a stop even down below 30 and a half, let's say you, you even let the stock drop through fan line here, here, and here, you let it drop through three fan lines, you could still protect it below 30 and a half without really uh breaking the longer term trend in, in other words this stock could still pull back and break three or four fan lines but still technically be in an upward trend and that's that's what i would do i put my stop if you're a longer term investor i put my stop below 30 and a half if you're a shorter term trader i would put my stop below the 20 period moving average or below this fan line right here so uh, my forecast on this one will be lower because just by the domino effect if the general markets continue to experience some pressure this could very well go down in sympathy with that and there are going to be very few stocks that are going to buck a trend once the the bears start to come in so hopefully that helped you out okay jeff is um y n and uh, YNN is the uh, ticker symbol. I think that's right. If I have that wrong, Jeffrey, correct me. All right. So uh, Jeff has sold the $24 puts in July. That's going pretty far out there. Um, I, I don't normally sell any options that far out, but. For you to lose money, it would have to drop below. Uh, it would have to drop below 24. And believe it or not, this one could actually do that because it's a leveraged ETF. This is 300% that of um, the iShares Trust. So, um, yeah, you got to be really careful because if the market starts to go down, this going to go down with it but it's going to be three times that in percentages so i i think if you sold the puts and and you could take a profit on those i would take the profit actually because as soon as it starts going down below the the 20 period moving average you could see that that downward movement extend a bit and then you're turning a profit into a loss uh are you able are you able to take um are you able to take that? Oh, TSE. Oh, let me see. Am I getting the symbols wrong? Let me see. No, it's Jeff. Okay, someone else put it in another stock symbol. Okay, so hopefully, Jeff, that helped you out. And uh, Gene is, oh, he's telling me that that other one was on the TSE. Okay, I, I'm not able to get that one. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let's go right to Bob. Bob is 
he, he'd like to shore at 250. Okay, that's the same one from last time. All right, new symbols. You could start typing those in. So I think we're, at, we're getting close to the end of the list here. And uh, let's see, Tiva from Prem. Let's look at Tiva Pharmaceutical. This stock has been one that just, this one has some volatility. And this, this was a, a darling of a stock for many investors for many years because they were the, you know, they were the cheaper pharmaceutical drugs and uh, they, they generally made more profits because uh, their, their drugs were so much in demand. But um, Prem is asking, is it good to buy or wait? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to use this one as a classroom example of how to read the charts. Now, before I give you uh, my analysis of what the charts are telling me, when, when you're looking at a chart, the first thing you do generally is look at a longer term trend so that you can get an idea of what that stock looks like. And you can see that for the past three years, this pharmaceutical company has been in a significant downward trend. And I'm not talking a, a slight pullback. This is this is a downward trend where it it was you know, 2016 it was trading over 70. Now it's trading below 18. All right. Now let's take another step back and look because I'm trying to find support for the stock. You see. So here on the 20 year chart, you can see that the high was back here, back, like I said, in, in 2000, actually 2015, August 2015. And the, the charts are showing a support level down here. You see this low from 2001. I'm going to go and extend that all the way to the right. And you can see that if I drop that line, I'm trying to get as horizontal as I can there we go you could see that that support level right there at 1178 is more or less a, uh, a 17 year support level that's the low from back here in 2001 now what does that mean for, for someone who's looking to buy it well the good news is if you're thinking about buying it uh, you you could put your stop somewhere below 11 and a half and use that in the calculation for your risk management uh, formula. Okay, that's number one. But now that I know where support is, I could then go back to the daily chart, again, seeing that as support, and then start to analyze the stock. Okay, so the what I look at, what I look at, and I look for, I look for gaps. Okay, there's a big gap above the market that was probably driven by some pretty bad news. There's another gap down here. There's another gap down here. This one is filled. This one is still open. And this one is still open. So that would be considered a positive, okay, because there's gaps above the market. Now, from the look of that gap, that, that looked like that was catastrophic bad news. So I don't expect that gap to fill right away. But this secondary gap right here, is one that could very well be reached. It's not, it's tried to fill, but it didn't quite fill up to around 2370, up, up around that area. So that's the good news. It's caught between support and it's got resistance at the gap fill point right there. Now, if I go a little bit further, you can see this two day pattern is something we never ignore. And that's a bearish engulfing pattern. Again, all I'm doing right now, I haven't given you my opinion yet. I'm just analyzing the chart. What do you see on the chart? The charts are talking to us. So there is a bearish engulfing pattern right there. And generally, 80% of the time, bearish engulfing patterns result in lower prices. So now that we have all this information, we can go back to your question. Is it good to buy or wait? Well, I think from just what we pulled out of the chart, I think all of you can draw your own conclusions more, you know, more along the lines of, yeah, maybe it's better to wait because I see that in the past when there have been bearish engulfing patterns like we see here, 
when there have been bearish engulfing patterns, the prices usually drop. So what I would say is wait and see if the stock drops a little bit more. And let's say it drops to 16 and a half. I'm just throwing a number out there. Now, if the stock goes much lower from where it is right now, now you're looking at where the stock price is relative to that moving average. At that point, the rubber band is now stretched. It's stretched a little bit now, but you can see in past history has a tendency to go a lot more than where it is right now. So this one could get stretched a little bit more. So if the rubber band gets stretched and you can find a support level, maybe somewhere down here, you know, that you could find a pivot point or a bounce, then it would be better for you to wait till it finds a support level. And then what you do is you start to look for a bullish candle. It could be a hammer pattern. It could be a bullish engulfing pattern like we saw here. It could be a spinning top. It could be a doji. Those things tend to, tend to show signs of indecision or confusion and generally mean pivot points. So I would say, to answer your question specifically, I would wait wait for a pivot point to form, wait for a good candle. And then once you get that signal to go, I would put my stop pretty close below support because again, uh, Tiva is well into a downward trend. So that'll help you protect yourself. Okay, now Ken Sterling is looking at WFC. And I believe that's, World, uh, that's Wells Fargo. <clears throat> and his question is more of a statement looking at WFC if it reverses on support today. Um, this is one uh, that is showing some signs of buy action. Number one, you're at a support level or very close to one. You have a bearish engulfing pattern from Friday. And then today you have very close uh, to it being a uh, hammer pattern. You have a long shadow. Um, I would say the drop in volume is telling us the sellers are starting to slow here. So you're probably going to see tomorrow, like the rest of the market, I think we'll go a little bit low before we go higher. I think you could see Wells Fargo drop a bit before it bounces, at which time that might be a better point for you to get in if you think about doing that. Okay, there's a lot of stock symbols starting to show up now. Keep them coming. That's good because I'll I'll keep going right to the top of the hour. Okay, so uh, Ron is asking about Altria, which is used to be Philip Morris ticker symbol M O, <clears throat> and uh, you can see I analyzed this before. Let me see what we said. I think there might have been some fan lines there that we were looking at. Yeah, I think so. Let's see if we could even use this as an example. Yeah, they were. Um, Upward trend, yeah. So, all right. So you could see again. This is a um, this is a longer term twenty year chart. And being that we're on this chart, let me let me erase these lines because it's something. I'm going to see if someone else could see what I'm seeing right now. And I'm going to zoom in slowly. Can anyone tell me what kind of price pattern we're looking at here? As I zoom in, let me zoom in a little bit more. Can anyone tell me what kind of price pattern that is? Dylan was, oh, Dylan, Andrew, and uh, yeah, Dylan and Andrew were the first to answer. Ken is a close third. That is a head and shoulders pattern, folks. And um, let me, uh, I'm going to analyze this to help, to help Ron out as well. This area that I'm circling right here is the left shoulder. This is the head which is the highest point. And what we're looking at here is the right shoulder. <clears throat> now, you could draw the, the lows at these troughs. I'm going to call them price troughs. You see the, the area between the left shoulder and the head, the price drop. There's the support level. If I take that and, and draw it out and connect it, that is what we would define as the neck line, like, like your neck. And again, if, if you uh, want to learn more about this, I have a video on our website that talks about head and shoulders tops, okay? Now, again, if you're thinking about buying a stock like this and you see a head and shoulders pattern, 
you absolutely should not ignore the neckline because again this is a monthly chart not a daily chart the monthly chart is showing us the neckline right around 60 and a half if it breaks down below that neckline then all bets are off for any long positions it'll probably go lower from there all right so that is something you cannot ignore now as i zoom in you'll see that you the head and shoulders pattern is more, turning more into a complex head and shoulders pattern now that's a weekly chart but this neckline is still in place you see that and now if i go to the daily chart you can see the neckline is still in place <clears throat> so from from an investor point of view i generally stay away when i see head and shoulders tops like that because it's very very difficult for a stock especially one that's so widely held with the institutions it's very hard for a stock to get back into a full-fledged upward trend once the head and shoulder pattern starts to form you see think about the psychology behind this the head and shoulders pattern might stay intact and the neckline may never be broken at least never in the next couple of years but the fact that it's showing up causes a lot of people who are paying attention to the head and shoulders patterns to hold back they're not going to be so enthusiastic about putting their money into a stock that could possibly be forming a, a, a major reversal top pattern you see so i i would stay away at least for now you had a bull a bearish engulfing pattern show up on friday if you still get the urge to to buy into this one then i would uh, certainly wait for it to form some kind of a pivot point down here and even with that i i would be a short-term hold to get out with a short-term profit i wouldn't be looking for that uh, to, to be a long-term investment in, in any stretch but again that's my opinion and what i would do you're still going to do whatever you want to do but i would recommend you protect your downside okay uh <clears throat> let me see dylan uh is uh, on baidu is short the march 30 march 31 250 put all right let's look at baidu for dylan keep keep on um, those uh stock symbols coming in because i still have 13 minutes so i'm gonna try to get to as many as i can all right so let's look at baidu this one took a hit today this one's down pretty good and um and look at that these are my forecast lines we was talking to one of our subscribers and this was my forecast for baidu with the end of that line being my target so today we hit the target from that analysis and uh, the volume is is pretty low but here's my spin on Biden. Now, Dylan, you may not want to hear this one because you're short the 250 put and it, it closed at 252.83. So, you know, there was a point in time today where it was almost below your strike price. So I would be very, very careful on this one because now that the stock has closed below that 20 period moving average, you see, again, with your own eyes, there's a tendency for that stock to continue lower after it closes below the 20 period moving average and you short you short the um, oh wait you can't be short the march march just came off came off the board uh are you short the march you were short the march or you short the april let me see i want to make sure i'm giving you the right information what which option are you short march just came off the board last uh last friday let me see. I'm just waiting for an answer. Okay. Well, while I'm waiting for that, let me just continue. This stock could very well continue lower, and you can see that there's a gap down here right around the 227 area. So be careful that one. Dylan, I'm still waiting to see. Okay. Oh, you should the weekly one. All right. That's what the 31 is. Ooh, man, you're a risk taker. Uh, my gut is telling me it's going to be in the money by Friday. I, it just this is a this one doesn't always trade in line with the uh, with the Dow. This this is one of those you know Chinese internet stocks that that has a mind of its own. And you, you see what happened with Netflix today. Uh, Netflix got got slammed and then formed a hammer pattern. But Netflix also closed below that fan line. So you got internet stocks like Amazon 
AMZN. I'm just grouping these together so you can see what's happened. You got Amazon, you got Google got really slammed today. Look at this, it was down $35. Uh, that one hit my target today. Um, so you have to be really careful. I don't trade the weeklies. Uh, you can make money in them, but for me, it's just too much work. And, and I don't like to add stress to my life. <laughs> I like to remove stress from my life. Uh, so I don't trade the weeklies. Um, I think a better way to go, you have to think about this, Dylan. I don't know how much you're looking to make on the trade. But let's say you're selling a week. Let, let me give you an example. Just tell me how much you sold the weekly put for. Just give me the price at which you sold it. Um, I'm not going to look at the at, at, at up or down on. Just tell me what the price the price that you sold at because I want to give you something else to think about that might be a little bit safer for you instead of the weekly chart. Okay, so my my example here is going to involve. You selling the weekly chart for whatever amount of money versus you selling a monthly chart, all right? A, a, a monthly up. So you sold you sold the weekly 250 put for a dollar forty. All right. Now let's go back. Let's go back to your Baidu uh, chart. Okay. Now let me show you. You're you're hoping that it stays over 250 so you can keep the dollar forty. Well, another way to do this is to go out. And sell uh, my screen is a little bit slow here. I don't know why. Is to go out and sell the April option. Let's say you sell an April 240 put. Okay. You sell an April 240 put for let's say four and a half. And you wait one week. If the stock goes up or even stays the same, there's a good chance that that option will decay by about a dollar, dollar twenty, in this, which is almost the same amount you're looking to make by cutting it close. You see, what I'm saying is trade the trade the April option, but handle it like a weekly option. So if you're ten dollars further away under the money, then I would. I would go with that one because number one, it's safer. Number two, you can make the same amount of money. And if the stock rallies and you wind up keeping the position, you could make you know three times more the money than you are now. You see, so you, I know the weeklies look very appealing to a lot of people, but you're actually cutting yourself short and putting yourself more at risk instead of you know just doing like I said, trade the monthly option like a weekly trade and and you could do better okay now on that note i want to talk about uh <clears throat> excuse me i want to talk about the netflix trade and and for those of you that are equity traders bear with me because i did tell the option traders i was going to address this we sold the 300 310 call spread in the march options and it went against us so what we did is we let that expire against us. And in other words, we took the loss, but the repair strategy was to go right out into April and sell another credit call spread. And you can see here that this is working out precisely like I thought it would. And now this stock is most likely going to head down to the next fan line in the sequence, which is going to allow all of us option traders to make back what was lost on the first round of the trade. So in other words, this was a repair strategy that allowed us to turn a losing position into a winning position. And I think that Netflix still has a lot of room to go on the downside. And I think we're going to make more money on that as well. All right. So Dylan, hopefully I helped you with that. And let's go to David, who is looking at PPC. Let's see, David, uh, I don't see what your position is. Uh, PPC actually showing good signs of a pivot point and a close above the 20 period moving average. Pilgrim's Pride is actually going against the flow. And, and this is a good point because a lot of times some of the best uh, stocks to look at are uh, the ones that are positive when the overall market across the board is negative. Uh, so again, in other words, what you're doing, you're looking for signs of strength 
in a weakening market. And this is one that rallied pretty good. It was up 1.97% when the rest of the market was getting slammed. So that's a good, that's a good thing. So if you're thinking about buying that, you got a good green candle. It closed on the high or close to the high. It would have been great if the volume was a little bit higher. But that one looks like a good trade candidate as long as you are putting your stop somewhere below that low right there because there's still an open gap below the market that wasn't quite uh, filled. So it still could do that, but it, it looks more positive than negative here. And so if you buy it, put your stop somewhere below that support, maybe around 24 you can give yourself a $2 risk per share on that one and, and move on from there. Okay. Uh, still trying to catch up with some of the um, – Nabil is uh, asking about CMI. Let's take a look at CMI. Question is, have, uh, have it got some profits already and may buy on a dip? Ooh. Um, all right. Let's do the same thing like we did before. In analyzing the stock, <clears throat> I'm just pointing things out to you. Okay, number one, we have a bearish engulfing pattern today. Boom, slaps you right in the face. Number two, we have another bearish engulfing pattern last week. That too slaps me in the face. Number three, it's closed below the 20 period moving average. That's not positive. Um, the only good thing is, is that the volume is lower, but unfortunately it's negative volume. So the sellers are coming in. And so, uh, if you have a profit, I would put my stops somewhere below today's low, not, not the low from down here, because that, that could mean another, you know, almost 10 point drop. I would put your stop somewhere below today's low and then only look to get back in if it closes somewhere above that 20 period moving average. That one, that one also, uh, Cummings is a stock that is often in the news. But if you look at the weekly chart, look what's happening. The downward trend is now broken. Boom. You see here? Uh, th this is, the more I talk about this one, the more bearish it gets. Because here is a couple of lows that I connected, which is the former trend. Now that the stock has dropped below that trend line, the trend line has now gone through a role reversal shift. So what was support back here, 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 and here is now acting as resistance. And this point right here, when a stock breaks below the trend and then the trend becomes resistance, a pullback, that's a bearish engulfing pattern. That's act, that's on the weekly chart now. That's called the kiss of death. I, I don't mean that to be funny. We That is usually a 95% chance that the stock is going to go a lot lower. That's, that's almost as significant as a head and shoulders pattern because it's almost like a cockeyed head and shoulder. You got a shoulder here, head here, much lower shoulder, and in one swoop, the neckline has been broken uh, twice as hard. And uh, finally, not to throw salt in the wound because, you know, obviously you did tell me you still have a profit on it. You now have another bearish engulfing pattern this week. So, in other words, if it stays – Anywhere below the opening from last Monday, if it stays uh, between now and Friday, that bearish engulfing pattern is most likely going to result in lower prices. Now I'm going to keep the um, I'm going to keep these lines on the chart for those who uh, want to uh, analyze the accuracy here. Uh, for the members out there that do have this in their in their member site. Go. I'm going to challenge each and every one of you, okay? I'm going to challenge you to go and listen to this recording the week before our next open house session. So that's going to be in three weeks, okay? I'm going to challenge the members to go listen to the whole thing with pen and paper in hand, and I want you to go back and look at every single one of the stocks that I analyze if you're up for the challenge and see how accurate these forecasts are. That's the beauty of listening to a recording. You can see whether or not I was right, or I should say whether or not the charts were accurate and right. And then that'll help you develop your confidence in being able to analyze the charts yourself. So it is uh, 8.59. That's going to give me enough time to wish you a good night. And I really want to thank you again for participating with a good crowd tonight. Have a very happy first day of spring tomorrow. 
and make sure you keep your stops in place because it's going to be an interesting week as the news unfolds throughout the market. So again, have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon. So long. This video segment is a small part of what the market guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at